You know, I've been fearful of doing this video for the longest time for reasons that I'll get into, but you know what? I decided that I will not fear. Let's talk about my favorite book of all time and why you should read it. Deep in the human unconsciousness is a pervasive need for a logical universe that makes sense. But the real universe is always one step behind logic. Once, men turned their thinking over to machines in the hope that this would set them free. But that only permitted other men with machines to enslave them. The power to destroy a thing is the absolute control over it. The mystery of life isn't a problem to solve, but a reality to experience, and hope clouds observation. There is no escape. We pay for the violence of our ancestors. The mind commands the body and it obeys. The mind orders itself and meets resistance. They betray the psychological tone, the deep uncertainties, and the striving for something better, plus the fear that nothing would come of it at all. I must not fear. Fear is the mind killer. Fear is the little death that brings total obliteration. I will face my fear. I will permit it to pass over me and through me. And when it has gone past, I will turn the inner eye to see its path. Where the fear has gone, there will be nothing. Only I will remain. Hey, what's up, bookworms, sandworms, and fighting fremen? I am Mike Mwadib, and I am here today to talk to you about Frank Herbert's Dune, 1965, the best-selling science fiction novel of all time, and if you ask me, the best book of all time. So yes, cat out of the bag, guys. Favorite book of all time, so obviously I'm going to have a lot of good things to say. Now, I have put this off for the longest time because with my Why You Should Read series, I always feel like it's what I consider people pleasers. It's something that people are going to love, I think, if they just give it a chance. With Dune, I've kind of put off doing this one because I, um, I, I don't think that everyone's going to love this. I've even said before that I feel like at this point, most people that I recommend this to that try it are probably not going to like it. I expect more people to dislike it or be indifferent on it than actually love it like I do. So uh, I, that's why I've kind of put this off for the longest time. But after I did that reaction video to the new trailer and people saw just how important this book is to me, uh, the outcry for me to do this video was too much for me to ignore. And uh, on this channel, I always like to give the people what they want. So um, what I'm going to do now is tell you a little background about this book for me. Uh, I read it for the first time when I was 15. And I hated it. <laughs> I didn't finish it. Uh, I was like, that's just too much for me. I remember my dad and my brother watching David Lynch's movie when I was younger. I had no inch. I was like, this isn't Star Wars. I'm out of here, right? Uh, but when I got into high school, I found it in the high school library. And I said, hey, you know what? Why don't I give that a try? Uh, didn't finish it. I say I probably got to about the end, middle of the second act, uh, which I'm not going to be spoilers in here. Don't worry. But uh, I, I tried it again later on in high school. And I actually finished it that time. I think I was 17. This time. I think it was a junior in high school. And I was like, you know, I kind of like it, but I think it was just really super pretentious. <laughs> and, and, and I can get people to say, hey, do you, st you, see, you, use, you use the word pretentious when you were 17? Well, yeah, I'm a reader. You know, it just kind of comes along that way. Anyhow, a little bit of time went by and it was still in my head. And I was like, well, did I, did I, did I love the book? I, I can't even decide. Why is it still in my head? And so I tried it again, senior year of high school, right before graduation. And I remember being so thankful that I didn't have finals as a senior that I got to test out of because I became obsessed. I absolutely loved everything. It just clicked for me in a way that I could not explain. Uh, my third eye opened, you'd say. And all of a sudden, this book just completely changed the way that I viewed 
everything. And that's really what we're gonna be talking about here. So while usually my why you should reads, like I said, they're gonna be stuff that, hey, you give this a try, you're gonna like it. This is gonna be more of a why I love Dune. It's just gonna fly under the why you should read banner uh, because I think that's more recognizable to people. And I think that there are a lot of people that are curious about the book. There's a lot of new interest in it after that trailer dropped. It's re-entered Amazon's bestsellers list. I'm sure it's gonna hit the New York Times bestsellers list here pretty soon. So I figured there's going to be lots of new opportunity for me to share this amazing story with other people who might not have given it a chance otherwise. It kind of feels like that Lord of the Rings moment for me where I've been talking about Lord of the Rings for the longest time. And friends were like, oh, I'm not into fantasy. And then that first trailer for Fellowship of the Ring came out. And they're like, okay, I might try this out. And then they saw the movie and they loved it. And then they read the whole series. So I kind of feel like that's what this is going to do for Dune for me, given that that movie is as good as I think it's going to be. But that is kind of my background here. A little background only on the book. Published in 1965. It's been translated into a dozen languages. It sold over 20 million copies. And it is regularly cited as the world's best-selling science fiction novel. There are people who will debate that with you. But I, I, I kind of think it's undeniable. It spawned five sequels. Uh, two movie attempts, uh, now a, a TV movie in 2000. Uh, and like I said, the new movie is coming out here maybe soon. Depends on what's going on with the, the virus that shall not be named. But let's get into it, guys, by talking about what is it about. Now, it is set in the distant future, the year 10,191, to be perfectly clear. And we are amidst a feudal interstellar society in which various noble houses control planetary fiefs. Dune tells the story of the young Paul Atreides, whose family accepts the stewardship of the planet Arrakis. While the planet is an absolute inhospitable and sparsely populated desert wasteland, it is the only source of melange, or the spice, a drug that extends life and enhances mental abilities. Melange is also necessary for space navigation, which requires a kind of multidimensional awareness and foresight that only the drug can provide. Now, as melange can only be produced on Arrakis, control of the planet is thus a coveted and very dangerous undertaking. The series explores the multi-layered interactions of politics, religion, ecology, technology, human emotion, as factions of the Empire confront each other in a struggle for control of Arrakis and the spice, and in turn, control of the universe, shall we say. And guys, that is about as basic of a what is it about that I could give you without giving you any real spoilers there. So let's just move immediately into what makes it good or bad. Now, spoiler alert here. Uh, it's going to be mostly good coming from me. But I do want to let you know, there's going to be no spoilers for the novel. In fact, I'm not even going to get into the nitty gritty of the book because I do intend to review Just Dune by itself, standard book review, before the movie comes out. So I'm not going to get into every single little detail of this. I'm just going to talk about this world overall and why I think that you would really dig it. Now, it is social science fiction. I hate the subgenre thing, but it's hard to say that's not because it's less concerned with technology and it's more concerned with these ideas on society. Yes, this is a very, very thought-provoking book. You're not going to find a lot of Buck Rogers shoot em up here. There's no hard science outside of some basic physics. Uh, it's very, very approachable, I think, with its science. It's nothing, no techno babble that's going to lose you or anything like that. But its plot mechanics are philosophical, biological, ecological, uh, political, big time political, and it's highly thought provoking on things like power and religion and traditions and customs and man versus nature, fate versus free will, overpopulation, and of course, yes, politics. I cannot tell you that the in world politics in this are some of the best in the game. And I think that's why you get so many people who are convinced that this is fantasy because they don't think that science fiction can have politics quite as good as this. I'm, I don't know if that's necessarily the case, but let me address that elephant first. This is called the best-selling science fiction novel of all time because it is a science fiction novel. What I've always argued is it is a science fiction novel that is a good place to welcome in fantasy fans. People who've only read fantasy and they want to try out some science fiction, this is the perfect place to start. So I think that's why it gets there because if you're going to break it down like that, then I mean, is there really science fiction? Or is science fiction and fantasy the same thing? That's a conversation for another time. But I will go to my deathbed calling this a science fiction novel. There, had to get that out of the way first. Now, the people who love twists and turns and backstabbing and backroom politics, all that stuff you loved about when you were watching Game of Thrones or whatever, you're going to feel right at home in this world. And I'll get into that influence here in a little bit because there's not a page that goes by where you're like, well, that feels like some serious 
political posturing, but whose side are they on? Who's doing this? Hey, who's working in the shadows over here? You are questioning the whole time, and it's not in a way where it's just like, it's not a Scooby-Doo thing where you're like, well, it's just going to be this person. That makes the most sense. No, there are big-time betrayals, and when they happen, you're actually shocked by them. And then when you get into things like succession and you know just keeping your eye on the throne i guess you'd say uh, frank's not afraid to cross any lines uh i won't call this grimdark but i will say that there are things that he does in this book that even the grimdarkiest uh, writers don't touch and he does it in this book so there are some upsetting things here you're not going to have over overly sexual violent themes or anything in here he's very much like a, a robert jordan or a tolkien in the way that those violent things happen he's just not going to explain them to you in detail and that's another hang up for a lot of people is that his prose might not be what you're looking for but i'll get into that when i get into uh, the bad stuff um the whole essential coming of age story in sci-fi that is what this book is it, there there are plenty of coming of age stories but this is it this is the coming of age story for science fiction because I was the same age as Paul the first time I read this, and I was much like the younger Paul, who is very much a brat when this book starts. And then I think as he grew and I grew, we were the same age at the end of this book when I really just clicked with the book. And I think that that really made it where I was able to identify with this guy, you know, who was just afraid to embrace his uh, his responsibility, his duty, and he has to grow up overnight. It's one of those kind of things. So it, it, very, very relatable to, uh, to, to young readers, I think. And that's why I say also, I, I don't necessarily know if it's one of those things you have to read while you're younger. I don't think so. Because uh, I know a, a, the reading level for this is a little higher than us, than your standard. This isn't YA or anything. I wouldn't call it an overly difficult read or anything. I just think maybe if you've read something like Lord of the Rings, I think you'll be okay here. But you know, if, if you're going straight from like The Hobbit to this, it might be a little tough for you because it is a, a large jump in the, uh, the reading level there. But again, that just depends on you. Obviously, that just depends on you. But um, yeah, the, the idea of dealing with what your destiny could bring to the future, that's the big one in this book where it's just like, would you do what you have to do if you knew what the result was going to be and it wasn't a happy ending? It's, it's, it's got so many struggles like that. And again, this book isn't pew, 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 shoot them up. This book is seriously thought-provoking and in ways that you cannot compare to any other story. I mean, there's been numerous things that have tried to rip this off, and we're going to talk about those here in a minute. But again, it's the struggle of doing right and wrong, or what you think is right. Is it right for everyone else? Is it self-serving? You know, those are these are the kind of questions that Paul has to face in the story. You think about the responsibility that's that's thrust on this young man's shoulders at this age is just immense. I mean, it's the weight of an entire planet, literally and in the universe. So, uh, yeah, uh, it's really hard not to get into spoilers, talk about stuff like that. But uh, displacement, death, love, family, uh, adaptation to new cultures and ideas, these are things that I really feel like a lot of science fiction struggles with. And Frank was not afraid to tackle these ideas. He went right for it. If you're one of those people who loves to have some kind of social narrative in your book, you're going to love it. Because if you're looking for it, it's probably there, especially those save the planet types. It's going to be there if you're looking for it. Uh, the ecology of Dune is a subject all in its own. Uh, so, I mean, Frank himself was an ecologist, so it, it makes sense why that's all in here. And it, again, it'll really make you think, and especially overpopulation, lack of resources. That's a big, big thing in here. So again, all you green people are going to find something to love here for sure. Now, if you've watched any of my Stephen King videos, you know I am a sucker for the coming-of-age story. And I believe that this is a big reason why. Because I feel like this not only checks all the boxes, I felt like it created some of those boxes. You know, when I was reading as a young man, I look at it now, I'm like, yeah, I still feel that way. I feel even more that way now. So I feel like it created a lot of those things that uh, that other series feel like, okay, well, we got to do, let's do this kind of like, kind of like what Dune did. You'll hear that a lot. There's a reason that this book is so influential to anybody that's about the age of 30 or over and now seems to be branching to another generation. It, it's, it, it deserves the respect that it gets. Now, I want to do talk about some bad things here because I will say there is no perfect book. Guess it's my favorite book of all time. But I will always say there's no such thing as a perfect book. One day I'll talk about Lord of the Rings and I'll tell you the problems I have with that. And you guys know how much I love that story. So uh, it is slow paced. That's a huge one. 
there is not a lot of action if you're not fine like there's a chapter in here that is like 50 pages of a dinner party and it's just everyone at this table posturing politically and there are so many people who tell me oh i lost it at that chapter because i was so bored i'm like how are you bored in that i just thought that was absolutely mesmerizing but a lot of people they need some shoot em up they need someone getting stabbed they need someone getting shot they need someone getting betrayed it look you're going to get a lot of that stuff in the story, but it's not all front-loaded or back-loaded like you're expecting. It's sporadically placed throughout this book. And when it, that way, when the action happens, it matters. But yes, this is going to be a very slow book to some people. So you've got to understand what you're getting into here. This isn't Star Wars. You're not going to be having a thrill ride of action. But when it happens, it's good stuff. Speaking of the political posturing, yes, there's a, there's a lot of political posturing and a lot of build towards that. And it all counts in the end, but also there's a lot of words that are going to be thrown at you right up front. Bidi Jeshurit, Kwisatz Haderach, you know, Gom Jabbar, things that you're going to be like, what is he talking about right now? But like a Stormlight Archive or like a Wheel of Time, if you're just patient and you wait, you're going to get those answers of what this all, all this stuff is. You love all that prophecy stuff in A Song of Ice and Fire? This is where it came from. I'll fight you on that. This is where it came from. Ideals and questions raised that you might not get a satisfying answer to in the original. Now look, I say that this is very much a standalone book. If you only want to read this book, because there's a lot of people lately been like, wait, this is a series? I thought it was one book. You can read just this one book. And I feel like you will be satisfied. You might have a couple things you be like, huh, I wonder if he meant this, but you can be like, but I come to this conclusion. It doesn't leave any, this wasn't setting up a, a big story. This was meant to be a standalone book, but the overwhelming success, at least I believe this, the overwhelming success was like, okay, well, we got to write a sequel, right? I think you could read this one and be fine. But if you want to know more, the sequels are always there. But again, there might be some people who feel like they might not have all their answers or whatnot. But uh, just know that it's there. It, it, there are going to be things that are able to be branched out. But again, if you want to treat this as a standalone, I think you're going to be fine. That's the only real bad I have for it. Uh, I don't think that there's any problems really that are going to just be uh, story breaking for you. Uh, but again, it's hard for me not to look at this in a biased nature. This has been a book I've adored for 15 or 25 years now. So uh, I'm doing my best to, uh, to, to nitpick here. But let's go on to why you're here. And that, of course, is why you should read it. Now, I believe it is good to know the pillars of your genre. Just how I tell everybody, you love fantasy? Go back and read Lord of the Rings. Give it the respect it deserves because that is where it came from. That's where all of the modern fantasy really, really grew its love from. Even Robert Jordan loved Tolkien. Even Brandon Sanderson loved Tolkien. Joe Abercrombie loved Tolkien. Everyone was a Tolkien fan. And I feel like every sci-fi writer out there is going to tell you that this was one of their influences and for good reason. So I think you owe it to yourself if you're a fan of the science fiction genre or if you're looking to cross into science fiction from fantasy, you owe it to yourself to read this and at least see what it's all about. And I believe that Dune is every bit to science fiction what Lord of the Rings is to fantasy. So that's why I make that comparison there. It is every bit as important, it is every bit as revered. And again, you're not gonna find a single science fiction author probably working today that didn't tell you that they were influenced in some shape, form, or fashion by Dune or by other things that were influenced by Dune. And that brings me to my next point here why you should read it. Uh, you like Star Wars? You like A Song of Ice and Fire? You like The Wheel of Time? This is going to be your thing because all of those completely took influence from this. That's why when I see uh, other booktubers who say, oh, they absolutely love Wheel of Time, they love A Song of Ice and Fire, but uh, they just didn't like Dune. I'm sorry, I hate to sound the whole gatekeeper thing, but I have to question if you really read it because it's blatantly obvious. One of my mods just read uh, Dune and was like, oh my God, I see so much Will of Time and I see so much Song of Ice and Fire in this. I'm like, it's impossible not to because they're there. The Aiel are the Fremen. The Bene Gesserit are the Aes Sedai. I mean, you could do this all the way down the line. You ever heard of Azor Hahai? Yeah, that comes from Huisat Hadarak. It's This stuff is just blatantly obvious to anybody looking for it. You like the good old house wars in a Game of Thrones? I cannot tell you 
enough how influential this is. I say this is a humongous Star Wars fan, but there would not be a Star Wars without Doom. I mean, even Frank himself said he was too good to sue George Lucas, but he should have, right? Uh, but anyway, and what I always say is, look, this book is not going to be for everyone. Are you, if you read it, is it going to be your favorite book of all time? Probably not. Probably not. There's a chance. Sure. Sure. I think this is the one book I can think of where it really depends on where you're at in your life before it clicks with you or not. Because again, it wasn't until my third try when I was 18 that all of a sudden I was like, oh my God. Everything in this makes so much more sense to me than it did before. And it wasn't because of like a reading comprehension level. It was because of where I was in my life at the time. The next biggest question I get is, should I read the sequels because I've heard that they suck? Here's the thing with that. If you go into the sequels expecting more of the first book, it's not going to happen. It's very different. It takes the franchise in a more different direction, in a more science fiction direction than it already was, in my opinion. It gets really super sci-fi. Uh, you get everything from like clones to shapeshifters to your know, intergalactic war. Uh, so it, yes, it's, it's, it's very different than this first book. And I think that's because a lot of the characters from the first book aren't really the focal point of the entire series. And I think that that really throws some people off. But I wanna show you these here. These are my paperback copies from when I was in high school, when I went to Half Price, not Half Price Books, I don't even remember what the store, bookstore was back then. It might have been Half Price, but I think it might have actually been Hastings. Anybody remember Hastings? Anyways, if you can see up there, I upgraded when they put out the new uh, paper trade paperbacks from these, because I felt, hey, these had got enough mileage off of them, but I couldn't bear to get rid of them. Because I mean, look, these, these are my high school years right here. I mean, look how worn these bad boys are. These are just like my Star Wars EU novels and that they have been torn up. What I will say about the sequels is if you're going to read the sequels, make sure you read Messiah and Children of Doom together because it is one story. Doom Messiah is basically a bridge novel to get to Children of Doom. So make sure you commit to reading two and three if you read the sequels because it is a very satisfying art. If you read just Messiah thinking that it is a sequel to Dune, you're going to be let down by it. But if you read Children of Dune and Doom Messiah together, you're going to love it. And I cannot tell you what it was like to be 20 years old and trying to wrap my head around God Emperor of Dune. I don't know if modern audiences can handle this book, honestly. Uh, there's a guy in the Discord right now, very young, about the same age that I was when I read this series for the first time, and he's got uh, God Emperor on his list next. And I'm very interested to see what he thinks because at 20 years old, reading God Emperor of Dune was like... Now, when you get to the next two, I, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of iffy on those. You know, I might revisit them sometime. I don't know. I think when I was in my 20s was the last time I had a full series reread. I really felt like it should have ended after God Emperor. And I'm not even going to get into the stuff that Frank Herbert's kid has done, the bastardizing that he's done to the series. So I uh, can't even really go into that. But look, are the sequels bad? No, not at all. They're just nothing like the first one. Also, when you're talking about arguably the greatest science fiction novel of all time, how do you follow that up, you know? That's, that's like your your first album is incredible and you're just going to be pressured to always top that first album and it, it rarely ever happened. But like I said, I think that the, uh, the central focus of those stories completely shifting will throw some people off. But look, guys, I do want to get into my final thoughts here. And I'll say, look, Dune changed my life and that is not hyperbole. I know a lot of people say, oh yeah, that book's so great, it changed my life. They don't mean it. I mean it with Dune because it taught me two life lessons that I still use to this day. When I was a very young man, I had absolutely no confidence, none. I was always constantly afraid of failure. And I'm sure you know where this is going. By now, even if you haven't read the book, you know the fear, the, the litany against fear, which I will not fear, fear is a mind killer, right? Everyone knows this. I think that that's just like a big pop culture thing. And people who've never read it are like, oh, is that what that's from? Uh, I thought that the litany just spoke to me when I was, like I said, first finding my confidence. I could have put on a camera like this and talk back then. Uh, anyway, anything in life. I was always afraid of failure. I had the lowest self-esteem. I came from a dysfunctional family. I thought that life was crap. And then I read this book and it taught me not to fear, right? And I, I know that that sounds corny to some people, but I took it to absolute heart. It became like a mantra to me. Look, the litany just spoke to me, right? It taught me that it's not wrong to experience fear. You just need to acknowledge it for what it is and just assess the warnings that fear is crucial 
but letting letting it dictate us is is fatal you know and, and again i know that might sound kind of deep to the most because the kind of things i talk about in this channel but that's just how important this book is and it really is the only book i can think of that really taught me life lessons and the other one is it taught me not to trust and worship leaders because they're just people like you and i they're not a messiah you know that's the biggest takeaway don't blindly follow anyone don't follow some cult of personality think for yourself be a free thinker don't live in an echo chamber think for yourself don't trust leaders that is just a humongous mantra that i've used my entire life so take that for what you will i'm sure you have your own thoughts of it but frank really he believed that power doesn't corrupt absolute but that power attracts the corruptible you know and that's a little different than most people would go with and uh like i said those are two lessons that i have put into my life every day since i was a teenager and not only did it help me overcome being just a big scaredy cat of everything uh, i believe it helped me find confidence it helped me overcome a lot of obstacles that i shouldn't have and it helped me not really repeat a lot of the mistakes that uh you know previous generations of my family have so if you think that's over the top praising a book for that uh i mean you might be watching the wrong channel because i do believe that a book can change someone's life with the words on it not just necessarily the story not just being like hey i'm gonna role play and pretend that i'm this character no it's nothing like that but it's the lessons that this book had in it is what made it so special to me and it's why i think if you find something in there that you identify with anything close to how i identified with it it's going to be a book that you want to read over and over again because I truly believe every time that you read this book, you will find something new that you didn't the last time. I've read this book 12 times and every time I come up with something new to take away from it that I didn't before. And guys, that is why I think that you should read Dune by Frank Herbert. Now, I'm going to do a full review for this where I'm going to get into the story, I'm going to break down the characters, and I'm going to do more than just talk about the philosophical nature of this book. I'm actually going to talk about the story. So that will be coming sometime before the movie comes out. Like I said, right now it says December. I doubt that's going to happen. But uh, whenever it comes out, I will start reviewing the Doom books. I'm going to do at least the first four. That is the goal. So guys, remember to let the fear pass through you because only you will remain. I'll talk to you guys in the comments. I can't wait. I hope you'll pick up the book. I'll put the link below if you want to buy it. It's an amazing book, and I hope you enjoy it one-tenth as much as I have over the last 25 years. I'll talk to you then.